Intelligent viewers, welcome to Models of Success. On today's show, we feature the Nobel Laureate, Dr. Marshall Warren Nirenberg. A renowned American geneticist and biochemist, Dr. Nirenberg is known for interpreting the genetic code and its relation to protein synthesis. Supreme Master Television had the honor of interviewing the director of the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, Dr. Francis Collins, who is a physician and geneticist himself, on the significant accomplishments of his colleague, Dr. Nuremberg. For centuries into the future, when a young person learning about biology first recognizes this thing called the genetic code that allows information in DNA and RNA to be translated into protein, they will be in awe. It is just an amazing system. It is the Rosetta Stone for biology where these two kinds of information come together and they will be in awe of Marshall Nirenberg's work work done here at NIH in 1961 and for several years afterward to work out the whole code where in a very clever, thoughtful, elegant set of experiments, uh, he figured out how DNA and RNA can be decoded this way and turned into protein. Born in New York, USA on April 10, 1927, Marshall Warren Nirenberg's journey toward his profound achievements began during his childhood when he developed a zeal for life and realized his desire to help others. Marshall had rheumatic fever as a child uh, and his family actually moved from New York to Florida because of the sense that that might be better for his health. And certainly that was an experience uh, that caused him uh, to think hard about wanting to be sure if he got better uh, that he spent his life on something that would help other people because that was a, a scary kind of interval. Then in Florida, he was surrounded in where he was growing up with all kinds of interesting bugs and snakes and such. So he was a bit of a naturalist, I guess, as part of his upbringing. And then he turned that interest, which was a more descriptive kind of science, uh, into this passion for understanding the molecular basis of life. I don't think it's a coincidence that he had that starting point uh, as a younger individual. I think that was the foundation he built upon uh, to decide to get a PhD and then to tackle the toughest problem in science that there was right there, the genetic code. In 1957, Dr. Nirenberg was accepted by Dr. DeWitt Stetton, Jr. as a postdoctoral fellow of the American Cancer Society at NIH. He would continue to work there for more than 50 years. In an interview at NIH, Dr. Nirenberg explained how NIH enabled him to pursue his interests. I decided to switch fields and to, uh, to ask the question, um, does the information that we inherit from our parents, which determines the sequence of amino acids and proteins, which are the machinery, all the machinery that we need for, for life, uh, does that information come directly from DNA or does it come from RNA that, that's transcribed from DNA? And, you know, you're not supposed to, to uh, switch fields when you first become an independent investigator. You're supposed to prove that you're a good scientist and productive. And so uh, that was a dangerous, a dangerous thing to do, but nobody would have given me a grant to do it because I had no experience in the fields. So basically, the NIH is the only place I could have done it. Thanks to the fine facilities and support system at NIH, Marshall Warren Nirenberg was able to delve into these investigations together with postdoctoral fellow Heinrich J. Mathai. So what was the experiment? Really the question was, what sequence of letters in the RNA code would give a particular outcome in the protein amino acid code? And that first experiment was where the RNA was just a string of uracils, U, 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 over and over again. 
And when they looked to see what had happened in the tube, it turned out they saw a long string of phenylalanines. We now know, well, that's because UUU codes for phenylalanine. They proved it. Well, that was one out of the 64 possible ways you could string together uh, three letters of the DNA code. What about the other 63? With these exciting developments, other respected scientists such as Dr. Hargobin Karana and Dr. Robert W. Holly joined the Nirenberg Lab. He became suddenly one of the most important mentors for the next generation of biomedical researchers because they all wanted to be part of this. And so remarkable leaders of the future, people like Phil Leder and Tom Kasky and many others uh, came through the Nirenberg lab during those three or four years and built their own careers while they were learning from the master. Working with a smaller staff, Dr. Nirenberg's work was not without obstacles in the coding race. However, he was fueled by his deep conviction to continue with his project. Well, first of all, Nirenberg was not expected to be the person to make this breakthrough. Marshall Nirenberg went continuing onward with the work along with his postdoc. And then at three o'clock in the morning, uh, on uh, one famous morning in 1961, uh, the experiment worked. When Models of Success returns, Dr. Francis Collins will further speak about Dr. Marshall Warren Nirenberg's remarkable achievement. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. He just had no sort of self-promotion about him at all, but he was straightforward, focused on science. That was his passion and he was completely honest about what he knew and what he didn't know. Not to say that Marshall didn't want to succeed, he certainly did, but he did so as a gentleman. He was the kind of guy you just wanted to have on your team. His joy in exploring this new scientific territory, even though at that point uh, many people would have said, oh, it's time to retire. Marshall, it's impossible to contemplate the idea of walking away from science. It was what got him up in the morning. It was his life other than his wife and his kids, which was the other big part of it. Welcome back to Models of Success as we talk to Dr. Francis Collins, Director of the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, about the life and works of Nobel Laureate Dr. Marshall Nirenberg. After three years of intense research, Marshall Nirenberg and his colleagues accomplished their goal. They decipher the genetic code. The first description he gave of the code was at a conference in Moscow in 1961. He was scheduled to speak in a rather small out-of-the-way session where there were only 30 people or so in the room. Francis Crick uh, heard the presentation and said, oh wow, you've got to give this talk again in a larger session. And that's what happened. And then, because there were a lot more people who really understood the significance, the whole meeting suddenly became electrified by the realization that this was the first success in trying to identify the code. Dr. Nirenberg had expressed with NIH the deeper meanings of his findings. All forms of life on, on Earth are actually related to one another. This had a tremendous philosophic effect on me, uh, actually. What were the far-reaching implications of this advancement? 
his completion of those experiments essentially established the last piece of the basic dogma of molecular biology, a dogma that applies to all living things. Life has this same genetic code, whether you're talking about bacteria or frogs or guinea pigs, it's the universal code. If you needed more evidence about the fact that life is descended from a common source, this really did it. For his brilliant discovery that opens the door to understanding the genetic code and explaining how it operates in protein synthesis, Dr. Marshall Nirenberg shared the 1968 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine along with his partners, Drs. Hargobin Karana and Robert W. Holly. At this time, Dr. Nirenberg had turned his attention from molecular biology to neurobiology and how the brain and the nervous system develop. His contributions to cancer research had earned him a reputable name in the field of neurobiology by the 1970s and 1980s. Marshall clearly had this vision of how science could help people. Uh, he would be the first to say that we should be careful not to make that so targeted that we miss out on making discoveries that are going to have profound effects downstream. And the kind of science he did that uncovered the genetic code would have been seen by many people as quite basic. But it has had a profound effect since then. The Human Genome Project, which I had the privilege of leading uh, for all those years, you can see a direct tie uh, from Nirenberg's discovery to why we would want to know the complete sequence of all of the DNA in the human genome. All of those things built upon the foundation that he gave us uh, by that set of discoveries. For his major contributions, Dr. Nirenberg was honored with numerous awards, including the National Medal of Science in 1964 and the National Medal of Honor in 1968 by President Lyndon B. Johnson. He was also elected in 2001 to the American Philosophical Society. Despite such esteemed recognition, he always maintained his humility and sincere love of science. Dr. Collins recalls his first time meeting Dr. Nirenberg. When I came here in 1993 uh, to direct the Human Genome Project, I bumped into Dr. Nirenberg, and I expected I was going to encounter somebody who was rather austere and unapproachable, and, you know, this famous Nobel laureate who had discovered the genetic code would not be somebody you could just start a conversation with. And I discovered that here was the most modest, unassuming scientist. Uh, who wanted to talk about science, and he didn't want to sort of reflect on his past achievements. He wanted to tell you about what he was working on right then, wow. which was some advances in neuroscience and some interest that he had in trying to actually turn those into some kind of translational impact, which for a PhD uh, was bold, but he was a bold kind of guy. He had an absolutely unstoppable curiosity. To anyone who's familiar to the world of biochemistry and genetics, Dr. Marshall Warren Nirenberg was a genius whose achievements laid the foundations to many important works to come. To those who knew this brilliant individual personally, he was a warm, genuine gentleman who glowed with his passion for working towards a brighter future for all through science. He is a scientist's scientist. If you want to look at a role model for what it means to be dedicated, to be creative, to be visionary, uh, and to want to help people uh, by giving of yourself in a generous, honest, uh, modest way, look at Marshall Nirenberg. You can't do better than that. We thank you, Dr. Collins, for taking your precious time to share with us more about the remarkable biochemist and geneticist, Dr. Marshall Warren Nirenberg. The legacy of this brilliant individual has certainly opened up a whole realm of insights into life and science, helping to pave the way for the betterment of humankind. Radiant viewers, thank you for joining us today for Models of Success. Please stay tuned for Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living, coming up next after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. May the marvels of God's creations fill you with hope and appreciation always. For 
more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash M-O-S.